Meet some people who have experienced a powerful educational tool. All the things that we've talked about in American education are things that we ought to be doing to develop kids better for the future, all happen in a project like this. I, I think that the kids have just discovered so much about themselves. They learn teamwork, they learn self-discipline, they develop a self-esteem that is so critical to their whole life. The experience, the confidence to come out of that shell and to go after what they want, regardless of their peers. It most definitely changes a lot. Been real cool. All right. This education innovation is almost a hundred years old. It's the blues. Created by poor African Americans early in the 20th century, the blues is the foundation of virtually every form of contemporary popular music. In the 1980s, a handful of educators around the country began to join with dedicated musicians and blues fans to bring the music into the classroom. Today, Blues in the Schools is a vital, diverse, and growing movement giving students a living experience of the art form while using the blues as a compelling gateway to basic education and personal growth. I have seen, uh, I mean, great leaps and bounds. I've been doing this program in the schools uh, for 12 years, and therefore some of these kids have grown up with me, <laughs> and they have changed their complete attitude. Kenneth Jackson teaches in Memphis which has one of the most extensive and diverse blues in the schools curriculums in the country. I think mainly it's, it's the rhythm of the blues and, and the intensity in the music. They're doing movement, they're counting, they've got numbers going in there, and then they, uh, they're all actually doing the three-line verse form. We're learning about the structure of the music. We're learning about the, the patterns and the sequencing, so we've got a lot of math built into the music. 11, 12, the music starts over. One, hear the change. Linguistic skills, writing skills. We're writing blues and we're doing poetry. And can't write about teachers. Don't do that. <laughs> I won't be here tomorrow. You have to face the music. <laughs> a way to integrate the blues in every subject, I'll <laughs> maybe, you know, maybe the children will learn more. Jackson also teaches nationally and internationally as a master artist with the Wolf Trap Institute for Early Learning Through the Arts. A recent residency in England proved that blues in the schools is highly exportable. The children over there just ate the music up. The parents devoured it. They said, we've got to have it because you've got their attention. And they're excited now. When they come home, they can't wait to get back to school. The Memphis program has generated that kind of excitement for years, with over 50 musicians working in the classrooms. The students look back to the music's African roots, and everybody gets involved when Richard Graham pulls out his diddly bow. Make it strong. Uh, sneak a lot of history, anthropology in on them. A blues camp, begun in the summer of 1998, brought together a group of inner city students who researched, wrote, and produced their own full-length blues musical on the life of B.B. King. <laughs> three-year project called Memphis Kids in Blues is a pioneering arts-based in-depth learning curriculum. It was designed to develop skills in language, history, research, and social studies in a real-world framework. Using this research as a springboard, the students created and recorded a full CD of blues, handling the production all the way through cover design and liner notes. Both the process and the final product 
exceeded all expectations. We want kids to know not only what they're learning, why they're learning, and how they can reapply that. That's what our future, our 21st century business people and community leaders have got to be. And I think that's the kind of student that we're building in the blues programs. Oklahoma has its own blues tradition, and there a husband and wife team bring a very different but deeply affecting approach to blues in the schools. For the last 12 years, D.C. and Selby Minner, under the auspices of the Oklahoma Arts Council, have brought a combination of music and basic life lessons into schools across the state. I think the blues can transcend all parts of our society, and so it, it, it is something that we feel is the glue. It's the bridge, in a way, to bring people together. The Minners teach all ages, from college students down to preschoolers, but they've begun to focus on working in alternative schools with problem students who have been unable to function in a regular school setting. When you get a creative mind and bore it, it creates something new to do, and that, that we call that outside the box, and that usually lands them in a place like this. So when, it, when, you, when creativity comes in here, it's a lot of creativity. Here, it's just it's been harnessed the wrong way. In week-long residencies, D.C. and Selby meet with students, recruit a musical group, rehearse it, and present a public concert. They teach the blues, but the Menners are teaching a lot more. Philosophy of life, values, um, just how to become ready for the world at large. You know, uh, things that are going to help you survive. Yeah, I challenge them. I tell them, uh, so you're supposed to be a mess up. So me and Selby's mess ups too. We stepped over the line. So they. They got two mess ups and a whole bunch of mess ups and asked us, can we do something constructive? What do you think? <laughs> it's, yeah, we can pull it off. It is. The first day, I could not believe the attention that DC was getting from our students. They're not the kind of students that give you a lot of attention when you're talking. Most of the youngsters in the Menner's instant bands have never performed before, or even considered it. But now, they're doing it. As the progress goes along, we show them how uh, preparation breeds confidence. If you feel you're prepared, you have confidence. When you have confidence, you can open up. It's going to make men out of them and women out of them. They're going to learn how to, to, to do it for themselves. And I just think this carries over to everything. You know, if I can do this, I can do anything. Friends, family, teachers, even city officials gather to enjoy the final concert. For many, it's the first time they've seen these young people step up, commit to a goal, and accomplish it. For the students, it's often the first time they've ever felt the self-confidence and approval that real commitment and accomplishment bring. When kids feel that or get that sense that it's something that they can do, it's within their reach, then they feel better about themselves and it builds that confidence. They're willing to try more as they have more success. I saw it in their eyes. It kind of, <laughs> you know, a light came on up there. These programs in Oklahoma and Memphis are only two of more than 50 across the country, from Massachusetts to California, from Detroit to Fort Lauderdale but they show the range of possibilities and the depth of influence that can be achieved. Blues in the Schools has been a true grassroots movement, created in many forms in many cities and towns, each working largely on its own. But the artists and administrators involved share an excitement and commitment that is undeniable. Based upon our experiences and watching kids get involved, and watching test scores come up, watching kids that were in ghetto schools that were extreme discipline problems do a total turnaround so that they could be involved in a blues group. You cannot better spend taxpayers' money or foundation money anywhere than in blues in the schools type programs because you are getting to the root of the problem. You're getting kids turned on through an art form. You're getting them involved in an educational process. And you're giving back to the public through those dollars. 
but this is something I can do and motivate others to do. I can train others to do this, and we can take this and do it across the nation and make sure it's in every corner of the nation. That's the next step, to link Blues in the Schools people and individual programs with a national network to share resources, ideas, and training and to foster new programs that will give every American child a chance to grab some blues they can use for a lifetime. Thank you.